We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing just fine. Um, just, just don't read the chat. They're talking. Yeah, nope, nope, <laughs> nope. No, don't, don't, just, don't look at the chat. Don't, 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 look don't, chat. don't stare chat directly in the eyes. Uh, yeah, uh, another Ohio State win. Um, where does this compare to, say, last week's win? Or, you know, does it, do we even try and compare it to some of the, like the, the Mac schools, uh, and those wins, not that Arkansas state's a Mac school, but you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, Kyle, let's, let's get into it. Um, Ohio state defeats Rutgers 49 to 10 underwhelming game. Generally speaking, is that, is that fair to say? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it was a typical Ohio state Rutgers game. I mean, Stat wise, number wise, not score wise. Really, We've seen Ohio State taken to them much harder in the past. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they've scored forty nine on them in the past, but it's about that range. I think mid fifties is mid upper fifties is what they usually score, which would have been nice if they scored ten more points. Jared, wink, wink, nod, nod. Yes, yes, uh, yes. But <laughs> but yeah, it's. I mean, what more can we say other than other than other than the First drive that Rutgers had there, it was just a dominant performance, uh, especially on the defensive side for Ohio State. Well, let me ask you this, Kyle, because, all right, the, we have oh, a... Their second, I, I apologize. It, they, they blended together there. Well, it was, yes. it kind of yes, feels yes. like the same drive because there was a muffed punt. So let's, let's talk about that. Ohio State does a pretty good job on defense gets the gets the punt you know forces Rutgers to punt uh then then they they screw up the punt um then after they muff the punt that put Rutgers in pretty easy scoring range and they 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 put it in the end zone so Kai you say it's kind of a typical Rutgers game but when when was the last time has there ever been since they joined the Big Ten any point in which Rutgers was winning the game. Cause we saw that in this game. It didn't last long. I give you that. Uh, I'm getting yeses. Are you saying Rutgers has led in the game before? Yeah, I believe they have. I, you know, I, I certainly, eh, I wouldn't be so certain. I think it was, oh, did it start three to zero last year, Austin? Well, listen, Jeez, Jared. I, no, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not taking, I'm not taking any of that. Now I swear on nothing but my memory, which is famously shit. <laughs> I think, okay. You guys keep saying, I think until someone says to me, Jared, you're wrong, and here is proof. I don't believe you. No, it was 2020. 2020 doesn't count. 2020 doesn't count. 2020 doesn't count? No. What? Move the goalpost. Fuck you. No, no, no. I'm not moving the goalpost. I'm not moving yeah. the goalpost. You're, you're, you're right. You are right. But but either way, 2020, Ohio State did score first. Oh, yeah, but it wasn't horse score. But did Rutgers ever lead? No. They weren't leading 2020 either. Good thing it doesn't count. Am I right? Well, now it counts because it fits my narrative. <laughs> I don't. I, I honestly don't think that it's ever happened that Rutgers was beating Ohio State. Uh, not not since I'm here to talk shit. Please do. Everyone else is talking shit, but failing. So... Everyone's trying to tell me, no, Jared, sure, surely Rutgers has had the lead in, in an Ohio State Rutgers game before. And everyone's like, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. But and then everyone's like, well, I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong. No one's no one's been able to tell me yet that I'm wrong. And I'm just letting you guys know I didn't look this up. I have no idea if I'm right. But man, it feels like I'm right. Man, you know what, Jared? What? They didn't they didn't play back then, Sun Card. Come on. Rutgers had the lead in 1867. Um, 
Ohio State didn't have their first team until 1889, 1891, somewhere in that area. You were going to say 2014. Well, yeah, but 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 they didn't play in 2014. Unfortunately, Jared is correct. <laughs> I just looked at every this is Austin saying it. I just looked at every yep. game. Oh my god. Yep, I did too. Oh. I did too. Yep, I did too. Yeah. Looking back at their first game, Ohio State 7 nothing the first quarter and um next game 7 nothing in the second in the first quarter. Um uh, next game Less yeah, 7 nothing in the first quarter. 14 nothing Ohio State. Next game was 14 to, or excuse me, 21 to seven, but Rutgers scored after 21. Um, was this 2020? 2020, it was seven to three, but Ohio State scored first. And then 2021, Ohio State scored 24 points before Rutgers scored. So you are correct, Jared. Oh, feels, it, that, that feels nice. It's really well, nice when I pull else, an amazing stat straight out of my ass and I'm right. Uh, according to the spread, Rutgers always starts with a lead. Yeah, that's that's those are facts. Those are straight <laughs> facts. Title of your sex right, tape. I don't yeah, know which you, I don't know specifically which thing you're talking about. Zero zero was a Rutgers lead in spirit. It was yes. Right, let's let's get back to 2022, Jared. Let's get back to 2022. Well, I would say held Rutgers to under 200 yards in this game. I don't care who you play, Rutgers yeah. or or, or um, Kent State or whoever. Under 200 yards is a really really good game. Uh, 56. Uh, excuse me. Uh, what was it here? Uh, 107 yards on the ground and 80 yards through the air. Yeah, um, I think defensively, this is a great game for Ohio State. Um, I know they give up the touchdown in the first half, but they forced the punt and then the muff thing happened. We already had that conversation. Um, Just frustrating at times. I don't think I don't think so. I think if you. Well, okay, yeah, there's still some like one on man coverage issues. I'll 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 give you this. I'll give you that. Um, Yeah, there's some man to man issues. why even field punts anymore? Well, good question. <laughs> I mean, you have to at least let them think you're gonna. You always got to at least make them think you're gonna. Because uh, you don't field it, you can't score. Right, Kyle? Yeah. Um, Just go 98 yards. Mm-hmm. I mean, sure. Why not? I, I think Ohio State has not had enough 89, or excuse me, 98-yard touchdowns in, in their past. Uh, so Kyle, uh, maybe even better yet, maybe even better yet, um, one for 11 on third downs that uh, Rutgers was one for 11 on third downs. That's, that's excellent. That's getting off the field. That's exactly what Ohio state couldn't do at times last year. Um, Rutgers had only 3.3 yards per play. Excellent work. It's honestly just excellent work. Um, yeah. Rutgers had several different quarterbacks in throughout the course of the game. Um, I think the only, uh, at least according to the stats we have here in the notes, the only one that actually ended up throwing a pass was Simon. Um, Vedral was always kind of a decoy. Um, he wasn't even expected to play in this game. Then he all of a sudden is going to play in the game. But then, as I said, basically was just kind of a distraction. They ran him. Not effectively, mind you. Um, <laughs> four carries for ten yards. Um, it was not. It, it was not a good offensive performance by by Rutgers. Um, no matter how you try to stack it up, um, their best receiving day in terms of yards. Ryan had two catches for forty yards. That's it. Um there was nothing happening. It was a complete and utter dominant performance by the defense. Um, Again, as Kyle pointed out, you keep them under 200 yards for the entire game. Um, Average. The offense as a whole average per play was 3.3. If you hold a team to that in rushing plays alone, you're having a good day. 
Yeah, absolutely. But I, I'm I'm very very impressed as for for quite a while, Jared. The linebacker linebacker crew was always the Achilles heel for the defense. It always seemed to be it's like what the heck's going on with the linebackers? They're not filling the gaps. They're not making these open tackles. But man, Chambers yeah. and Tommy Pickles, man, they are. <laughs> they are just killing it out there. They are just killing it. It just, I am so pleased, so pleased of what uh, Jim Dulles has done with uh, these linebackers here. Yeah. Cha Chambers, Chambers just, man, it, I don't know why I never really noticed it, but in this game, for some reason, like me just watching the game on my, <laughs> on my phone and I just see just this, big linebacker like he he looks like he's nfl ready type of linebacker just the way he's built and all that he is just a yeah. force to be reckoned with uh steel chambers has an amazing game um i he had i think two tackles for loss uh eight tackles on the day as a whole um tommy pickle eichenberg of course also had an excellent game uh hickman had more Hickman had more uh, tackles than I, I mean, only four, but more than I was expecting. It seemed to be like a, aside from Chambers, who had uh, an amazing, amazing game. Um, I, th I feel like the defense was very spread out as far as like who was making plays and all that. Um, I wouldn't say there was any. I, I, how do I say this? I just feel like it was a good team effort as far as the defense goes. Like. I think we definitely saw uh, mixed pass rushing. Um, it wasn't, we weren't seeing like Zach Harrison or JTT or he doesn't like JTT. I need to stop doing yeah, that. Nope. JT, just JT, just JT, JT. Um, or Sawyer or, you know, and then, you know, we saw some plays by Hall and we saw some plays by Tyleek Williams. Like, as, as, again, aside from Chambers, it just felt like an overall great team performance as far as the defense goes um, without anyone else, I would say. Like, there's no one else on the on the team who I would say, wow, and that guy. Um, it was, again, just because it felt like very spread out, disciplined defense. Uh, I, I don't necessarily have any critiques, honestly. Um well, the, they were playing on the other side of the offensive line. They were preventing any sort of push by the offensive line. They were penetrating. Uh, yeah. They were filling the they're filling the gaps excellently. The linebackers were shooting and making plays. Uh, I thought the tackling for the most part was completely solid. Um, it, it was the I I feel almost fear to say it like this. Defense was so good that it's kind of boring. And but that's that's a great way of doing it. Um, so I, I think I think if if there was only one thing that I had a critique about, uh, it's I, probably it, it, it's tough. Like I'm I'm really really torn about how about our defensive line getting pressures. Yes, absolutely. Tackling behind the line of scrimmage, absolutely. Uh, they had six tackles for losses, but. It just seems odd. I, I look at the stat here. Only one sack here. Only yeah. one sack, and it, and it wasn't any of our starters here. It was, it was, um, it was freshman Ryan Turner with the sack there. Yeah, zero sacks from the linebackers. Zero from the defensive line. I. Again, again, it's it's tough for me to. Again, me just be trying to critique this team here. I would like to see more sacks, but maybe that's just me being greedy here. Ever, so I, I talked a lot on the um, Know Your Enemy episode on Thursday about how there's like a book on Ohio State, specifically against the offense, right? And the book mm -hmm. against Ohio State is play a shell, force them to work short plays, you know, make them get bored, make them get frustrated. That that's the book on the Ohio state offense. So what's, what's the book on the Ohio state defense? The book on the Ohio state defense specifically passing is you're not going to have a lot of time to throw, get used to it. 
they yep. every team basically goes into the game thinking I have two seconds to throw the ball, and that's how they game plan it. That and you so you see a lack of sacks. You see, you know, all all you're seeing with the just lack of uh, you know. We have like no sacks on the year for JT, for Zach Harrison, for a bunch of the defensive ends who we would, you know, have expected to have a bunch of sacks by now. They're not they're not getting there. And again, like, I don't think this is a issue with the players, but they're getting pressure. Thank you, Michigan Bucknut. Yes, they are getting pressure. They're getting constant and consistent pressure. Uh, we had this conversation during SSS, Jared. They're making plays just isn't showing up in the stat column. 100%. Yeah, uh, we were definitely talking about that during the social screen. Join our Discord server. We watch the, well, it's not always the Ohio State game. Just to throw that out there. Uh, but the last two weeks, it was the Ohio State game. We watched the Ohio State game um, together in the Discord server. It's a, it's a fun time. The SS Minnow. I don't, I don't, I don't know why I felt the need to say that. Uh, but yeah, the <laughs> yes, I do. I, I know because I, I love that movie. Um, DN's getting more pressure this year. Last year it was mostly defensive tackles. Um, there was it was hard for anyone to get much pressure last year, and the reason I say that is because the defensive backs were. I don't want to say the defensive backs. The the defensive scheme was just leaving dudes wide open all the time. Mm -hmm. There was, it was, it's hard to get sacks when the coverage is always shit. Um, because there's just always somewhere to go. The pocket is just collapsing this year quickly. Yeah. 100%. 100 percent. The, the pocket's no collapsed, kidding. but, but no kidding, but teams it's it, these teams basically concede that going in. So there's always a quick dump off route to, to get rid of the ball as quick as possible. Uh, there's always a way they, they are constantly planning to just get rid of the ball in under two seconds. Mm -hmm. They just walk into the game conceding that. Yeah. Speaking of the defense here, Jared, what was, what was one thing that um, Ryan day wanted to see from this defense this year? No, I, one thing that, toughness toughness yeah but what what was, was a wrong. number what was a particular number oh did he say i think he said top 20 top 25 i think was the number that was the number that uh ryan day used and then and then coach Knowles got mad and said uh I, i'm mad he didn't say top five or top 10 or something well right now jared Ohio State has, through five games, has the tenth ranked defense. There you go. There you go. Um, Kyle, are you able to sort that wherever you are, no. or is it just like that? It's just like that. Oh, okay. I, I'd be most interested. <laughs> but, that's to be, yardage. but to be fair, I don't give one, a fuck about yardage. I want to know about points. Well, I okay. was going to specifically ask about yards per play because I think that's more important, honestly. But, but yeah, yeah. But to be fair. Uh, in this graph here, James Madison has only played four games. So, but okay, yeah, you're, that's you're why I wanted. That's why I wanted yards per play. But to be fair to them, look at their yards per play. It's it's honestly about the same there. Like if I'm yeah. looking on average there, yeah, it's about the same. So yeah, I think Ohio State is still tenth there. Well, I'm just saying I'd like to know. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll see if I can do it. <laughs> Look at it. Look at Illinois. Only 3.7. Well, well, well 3.8. More, more on that on Tuesday. Look at Ooh. Illinois. All right, Illinois. There you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yards per play are top 20, not top 10, is what Austin said. Apparently, he found some place that lets you sort it. Oh, and, and there's the thing. Um, yeah, Ohio State's at 11. I mean, you, when you said top 20, I mean, you're technically correct, but 
still feel like he kind of undersold that Austin. Yeah. Um, points per game, points per game. Ohio State is tied for 14th. For yeah, I feel like day. that would have been a lot better if the scrubs hadn't given up 14 against Wisconsin. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, let's see, where's Illinois? Look at this, Illinois still coming in at sixth place. Sixth place. When we do it per play. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right. All right, we're getting to sidetrack here, Jared. Let's get back to the to the Rutgers Ohio State game here. So we talked a lot about the defense, how pressed we were with the with the defense here, but let's let's switch this to the offensive side here. Well, do you uh, want to get into doing the actual grades? Well, I want to I want to talk about the offense first a little bit, and then we'll, and then we'll give the grades here. Well, I feel um, like we. I'm just saying, I feel like we could do both at the same time. All right. Well, the well the fine whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, offense, this is going to be a long episode. That's yeah. why I'm kind of pushing him to get into the grades. All right. Austin. Offense offensively, uh, I don't think I copied the. This the numbers from last week. All right. Uh, so uh, offensively, Ohio State 413 yards for this game. Definitely lower than what they typically used to uh, this this year. But the big the big surprise here, Jared, CJ Stroud own, only 161 yards in this game and one touchdown. Yeah, this is not. Uh, I'm sorry. Which which? Two uh, I'm sorry. Two touch two touchdowns. Who, who are we grading right now? uh let me pull it up real quick <laughs> come on kyle I, I, where's your graph i know let's go i know that, let's that's go that. kyle that's let's go i think i forgot okay all right you ready jared yeah. you ready to scroll down there you go all right first thing we're doing is coaching coaching right. coaching um i didn't feel like from an overall coaching perspective that this was the best game um I, with all due respect to Parker Fleming, uh, who's a coach and doesn't get to be uh, necessarily talked about under the offensive or defensive, what the hell are the special teams this year? Uh, aside from excellent performances by the kicker and the punter, by, you know, No Struggle Ruggle and Murko, what, what are the special teams this year? Because right now, Unless you are specifically Ruggle or Murko, the the special teams have been either a nothing burger or fine. <laughs> um, and I'm just saying, like, Ohio State went a long time without a dedicated special teams coach and had had better results. Yeah. Um, so overall coaching. Um, with all things considered, uh, you know, like a B plus, I mean, it, it wasn't bad. It's just felt a little uninspiring, especially from an offensive perspective at times. Yeah. So I got, got here in the chat. we got a B, a B Austin says F minus for calling the fake punt. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll get to that when we talk about the special teams here. Is that uh, F yeah, for I, respects I, of, uh, Shiano and day's friendship? I would say B. I would say B overall. I think um, defensively, great. Offense was they did their part, and special teams. I I, I kind of agree with Jared about the whole. Just nothing special about the special teams, other than they're doing their job. Yeah, for the most part. All right. Um, all right. Welcome, let's, Kabuto. Let's get, all right. Let's let's get to the offensive coaching here. Um, from coaching to offense, offensive side. What would you grade the? Offensive coaching. Uh, yeah. So uh, once again, I, this feels like a game that was fine. Um, this is a game that feels like a, you know, Rutgers, the defensive half of the team was the better half of the team. So you have to include that. But the offense itself, and I don't know if this specifically goes on the offensive coaching per se, but considering you're Ohio, like we, 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 you know, we grade this based off of expectation. And I felt like as far as expectations go, they were 
slightly below expectation. Like, I don't know. It, again, it this what this felt like was a was a game after a Wisconsin game. And then this was just sort of like roll out of the bed and play Rutgers. So like, I think Kyle, you wrote B minus in the notes. I'm good with that. Yeah, I think, I think, I think offensive coaching. Yeah. I mean, you score, you score 49 points and we're here. We're here like 49. That's, that's not enough. It's still a lot of points. That's still a lot that you're almost, you're almost averaging two touchdowns a quarter. That's, that's a, pr- that's a, Pretty good game offensively. So um, just with our expectations of this offense and who they played, I, yeah, I would say B minus them. Yes. Sun card. Yes. The spread was not covered. Yes. It was almost covered. That it counts, almost, right? It almost. All right. So I have here on the, in the chat here, I see a C, a C. Uh, Zach says an F. Come on, man. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll C put, sounds I'll, fine. I'll put C. All right. All right, switching gears, offensive side here, C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud, 13 for 22, 154 yards, two touchdowns, and his second interception for the year. And by the way, he threw a couple passes that were ill-advised in this game. Um, I... uh, Yeah, that was such a dumb... Yeah, and even the one that was an interception was a dumb read. Um... Yeah, 49 ties, the least amount OSU has ever scored against Rutgers. I'll say this is probably the best, especially from a defensive standpoint. This is the best Rutgers team they've played. This is the best defensive Rutgers team they've played. I'll say that. Um, This is not a terrible Rutgers team. At least it shouldn't have been, except they lost Vedral and their number one running back before the season ever started. It is a low bar, Austin, 100%. I'm I I'm not trying to suggest it's anything other than that. I you know it's for Rutgers. Um, this is a team that could have been better if not for some stupid injuries. And defensively, I think that they're a pretty okay team. I mean, like it is a great Rutgers defense. Emphasis on Rutgers. <laughs> um, but CJ Stroud just didn't look in it. I mean, even after the even after this game. Rutgers is 18th in total defense. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll give, I'll give CJ a, like a, like a C. Um, it, that's, it was, uh, he, he, again, the, the interception was just a terrible read. A couple of the, uh, he threw a couple other passes that could have been intercepted. Um, I felt like he was going for deep balls that were covered instead of short balls that were, again, we talked about the book against Ohio, uh, short balls that were available. Again, we talked about the book against Ohio State, play a soft shell, force him to be patient. Uh, he wasn't being patient in this game. Yeah. So uh, this, uh, the p- completion percentage was pretty low. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I think a C is warranted here. Yeah. So <laughs> Kabuto says that. <laughs> If you give CJ uh, CJ a C, um, he wants me to give CJ a J rating. I I, I think uh, Austin gave him but, a um, uh, D yeah, minus. I, yeah, I I gave him a C minus. I mean, it's just again expectations from CJ Stroud here. Thirteen for twenty two, and you got another interception. Made some bad throws here. Just not 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 the greatest performance we've seen. So he can, he could do much better. Uh, so I'd give him a C minus in this one. Maybe his worst game as a Buckeye. Um, aside, I think especially if we like the first few games last year, when he was still like trying to get into like, you know, his first couple starts weren't great. Um, even them, he did okay against, or yeah, I, there were other, uh, I feel like he wasn't great in September of last year. I'll say it that way. Um, So, but I'd I'd have to look. I think this was, oh no, it ties. This ties for. We're spoiled brats. Wait a minute. Kabuto says we're spoiled brats for real. Kabuto, we are grading based off of the scale. And and by the way, I, I, other people will be thinking it too. We're grading based off of the scale of expectation. Yes. We will grade CJ Stroud 
hard because he is supposed to be the Heisman leading candidate. He's supposed to be the number one pick in the draft next year. Yep. It is not fair to grade him any other it's way than against himself. Mm -hmm. So that this game here ties his uh, worst completion percentage since his uh, first um, his first start a year ago when they went to Minnesota. Also went 13 for 22, but had a lot more yards. He almost had 300 yards in that game. He already roast himself, though. Yeah, 100 percent. No, I'm but, but, but I'm, this was, I'm not saying anything negative about C.J. Stroud as a as a as a person. Yeah. I'm not saying anything um, about him as a player in a large sense. I'm just saying he had a below average game by his own standard in this game. Yeah, he yeah, this was in terms of yardage. Yeah, this was his Thank worst you. game. Our as geographically a, as a challenged player. friend. This was his worst game as a Buckeye in terms of yardage for um, for a quarterback. Uh, Kabuta says, uh, agree, by the way, just saying. Mm. No, I, and right. honestly, like, I, I even if you, Kabuto, I agree with you. And like, if you were thinking it, then someone on YouTube or someone listening is thinking it. So I think it's good to have that dialogue. So no, right. I'm 100 percent on board with you saying that. Offensive line, Jared. What would you grade the offensive line? A plus. Been pretty mean so far. Been pretty mean, so, a little not mean, strict uh, so far. Um, you look at the rushing stats. Um, I thought CJ had a clean pocket most of the game. I don't think he took a sack. One sack. One. One sack. Okay, he did take one sack. Um, but but look at the rushing. Look at the rushing numbers for Ohio State. Um, where is the uh, average per play was seven yards. And then if you look just at Williams, wasn't he like nine yards per carry? Something stupid like that. Uh, Williams, 21 carries, 189 yards and five touchdowns. Five in the next in the next section here touchdowns yeah i agree a plus a plus for this offensive line they i know there were some question marks and especially on the depth here as long as they stay healthy man this this offensive line and i said i said at the beginning of the year jared or like in june july and you kind of laughed at me or not laughed but you're kind of like eh. and i said this is this is this is going to be the best offensive line in the country i don't think and you had the right showing it i don't think they're you had the it. i don't think you had the right to say that then though I'm just saying I just uh, back then because it was it was unknown, right? You only had two people returning at the same spot. You only had two people returning to the same spot. And then you had a third player with experience moving to a new spot. And then you had two brand new players. I'm just it's it's hard to say they're going to be the best in the in the nation when there's just that much of a question mark hanging over it i never said they were going to be bad i just said it was always going to be how a much, question mark how much trust i have in them jared <laughs> how much trust i have it is uh, it is ohio state's weakest recruiting area so whenever you have to plot when when alave left and when garrett wilson left even though these were two of the best wide receivers in the country, we all just said, okay, next man up, let's go. Why? Because we recruit wide receivers like monsters. When you have to replace guys along the offensive line, it's always going to be more scary because they don't have as rich of a farm to pull from. Yep. All right. Uh, same thing with the offensive line here, running backs, Jared. The running backs averaged... Uh, or if I don't count those, uh, yeah, they average about eight yards per carry, but that, that also includes mine Williams nine average, um, Hayden had 3.1, uh, per carry Marvin Harrison jr. Had one carry for 14 yards. And of course, Jesse Murko with a 22 yard average. 
How dare he? <laughs> that son of a bitch. Deport him. Deport him. How dare he? <laughs> yeah. Overall, the running running backs, grading-wise, I give him an A. Just a solid, solid performance. Anytime that you tie a an Ohio State record for most touchdowns in a single game, you're you're having yourself <laughs> a great, great game. Um, yeah, and you know, we were kind of talking about the running backs and the offensive line and then kind of simultaneously there. I'm I'm good giving I'm good giving an A plus here as well. Um especially if we're talking about the starters. Uh the 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 when the backups got in and mop up time. Um the the offensive line that is, but I, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna drag down the starters for that. Um, but yeah, I think both the offensive line and the running backs get an A plus. All right. Wide receivers here, Jared. Uh Fleming gets a touchdown. Marvin Harrison Jr. gets a touchdown. Uh Emeka does not get one in this one. And the uh year of the tight end, uh only three catches from our tight ends here, Jared. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I, but it, we'll get to the tight ends here in a little bit, but the wide receivers, though. I I think overall, I think the I, I would give the wide receivers a B. I think I think they did what they needed to, but uh I I don't know. It's just something was off in this one. Maybe it just Rutgers Rutgers just really brought it on the defense and made it really difficult for the receivers to get open here. I don't know. It's hard to really pinpoint where it was, but I I think I think I feel comfortable giving the receivers a B. Um yeah, I mean, nothing nothing extraordinary from the wide receivers um I had a couple instances of course was the second one was the second instance that was um that was a tight end the second time but you know sort of stepping out of bounds when you don't really need to be stepping out of bounds i felt like they were just doing a lot of little things wrong as an offense as an offense it felt like they were doing a lot of little things wrong um rutgers plays heavy coverage defense and we don't uh, we didn't run enough level concepts, level picks apart a C4. I, and again, I'd really want to go back and watch it again before I say this with a ton of certainty, gangland. I think that there were people open underneath. There were people underneath who were open, and I think CJ was getting frustrated and trying to bomb it trying to go deep when he should have been taking what the defense was giving him. Um, yep. So I'm not going to put that necessarily on the wide receivers, on the tight ends, on the coaching. I think that's, that's CJ not putting the ball in the correct place, um, which is again, one of the other reasons why I graded him as low as I did. Uh, but yeah, whether it be their for their fort, their fault or not. Um, yeah. The wide receivers were just sort of meh in this game. But yeah, the I, same thing, same thing with the tight ends too. Yeah. It's kind of eh. well. So I, I, I think I would maybe grade the tight ends a little bit lower, maybe like a C plus. No, uh, I totally just, disagree. We have, to, we have to always, we also have to also talk about the tight ends in the run blocking game because Stover was a monster. Okay. A and minus. well, but but on top of that, Kyle, again, grading based off of expectation, we expect mm -hmm. the wide receivers to be otherworldly. And I don't necessarily have that expectation for the tight ends. So I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with a straight a here. Mm. I, I, I don't, I don't agree with that. I, I, again, expectations and yeah, they did really well in the run game, but mental mistakes. And I, I, I think they can do better. I think they can do better. So guys, right, what does the chat Kyle and I are pretty far apart on that one. So Everyone, let us Austin, know what's 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 your grade for the tight ends on that game. Yeah, Austin said B plus. I think I saw earlier. Uh, Zach says C plus. B plus B plus. Looks like they're falling in line with Austin. Not that you're it's falling like, in line with Austin, just that you're. Okay. All right. <laughs> dance well, my okay. So, so they're in the middle of us. <laughs> they're in the middle of us, then, Jared. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, defensive coaching. Defensive coaching. I, I give him I give him a solid A. I think yeah. just a 
fantastic job. What, what was that final number? I said 187 yards total um, to let up here. Other, other than the muff punt, they other than the muff punt that they put them in prime um, place to score a touchdown. They only let up three extra points after that. Great, great job by the defense. So I give the coaching staff a solid day. Yeah, I I'll take that. I, I agree. All right. Uh, defensive ends here, Jared. Uh, I'm th- this the defensive line. I I I, I kind of should we have a of... better name than muffed? I don't know. I don't even feel like we use that slang term anymore, do we? I, I struggle trying to figure out the defensive ends and how I grade them. Look, one side and look, hey, you only let up um. You only let up 107 yards on 36 carries, so three yards a three yards a carry on rushing. Yeah, you did really well, but on the other side, nobody on the defensive line didn't get any sacks. Um, I think here there technically wasn't any QB hurries from the defensive line here. That's they, a they lie. Just, they just from a stat from the, the official stats here, it doesn't show that, but. I, I I agree. Yeah, they they were a lot more disruptive there. So I think I think with the lack of stats that you see, but actually seeing them with your own eyes, I'd probably give them like a maybe like a a B plus. I would say disruptive, making making the the stops when they need to, filling up the holes, and then letting. Uh, Hickman and Eichenberg and Chambers and them just um, making the making the tackles there. Yeah, um, I mean, I'll, I'll probably give them an A personally. Uh, I thought they were incredibly disruptive. I thought they were good at, you know, keeping contain on the run game, setting edges. Um, I again, like you just said, eating up blocks pushing the offensive line backwards, creating penetration, creating hurry. I thought the defensive ends played great. Uh, And again, it doesn't show up in the stats. None of the defensive ends, none of them have good stat lines for the season. None of them. But I just don't think it matters. Uh, I don't Mm -hmm. think it matters. I think they're playing excellently. Yeah, well, I'd give the defensive tackles an A. Uh, I, I think a lot of it just came with the with the run stop and just like you mentioned, like it just seemed like all the pressure just coming straight to the quarterback right out the middle. That's, that's the big, uh, that's the big defensive tackles there. So I'd give, I give the tackles a solid a. I agree. I'll, I'll, I'll go right. with everything you said there. I agree. <laughs> Zach, Zach says, Zach says hall gets an S. <laughs> wrong wrong Hall's, scale. Hall's We're doing monster. academic scales. Yeah. All right, linebackers here. Another just solid, solid A. Uh, you know, what? I'll give I'll give them an A plus. Actually, I'll give I'll give the linebackers an A plus. Just I, I've mentioned numerous of times, Chambers and um, our boy Tommy Pickle is there too. Just just a stat building players here. Eleven tackles for Chambers, nine tackles for Eichenberg. Just great, great. Uh, work by the linebackers. Yeah, one hundred percent. Tommy Pickle, Eichenberg, Steel Chambers, A plus. Um, I have, I have no notes. I, I love how far the linebackers have come. Cody Simon was getting some snaps and looking good in this game as well. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm all for this. All right, defensive backs, Jared. Now, a lot of, a lot of talk, a lot of. Um, Concerned with our defensive backs here. Uh, yeah, Kyle Stokes got a, almost got a huge sack, but they handed it off. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Uh, not yet to the safeties. Defensive, uh, excuse me, cornerbacks. Sorry, corners. The corners, there's definitely some concerns, some questions about particular player. But overall, Jared, what would you get? What would you grade the corners here? They they only let up 80 yards receiving. <laughs> Yeah, but I feel like two of the plays were plays that I feel like those were plays that Burke defends last year. Um I some something something's wrong with Denzel Burke. 
changed his number for this game. Um, not sure what that was about. Um, maybe he was averaged last year on a shitty defense. No, I really don't think that was it. I thought he played impressively last year. Um, given the quarterback, that performance was bad. Zach says he's injured. He, I mean, he isn't healthy for sure. He's for sure not healthy. He missed, um, the Wisconsin game. Um, he is getting the sophomore slump. I mean, yeah, but why? I would say, yeah, but why? Like when we talk about a sophomore slump in regards to Travion Henderson, that Austin, it was, it's a lot like Dobbins. I feel like Henderson's trying to break plays open instead of just following his blockers. Um, but I don't know what the issue is with Burke right now. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate, but, um, he, I think even he is like visibly frustrated with himself. So I don't think I'm saying anything that is out of line by any means. Um, speculate. No, I'm not going to speculate. Yeah, he knows. Yeah, exactly. He, uh, Austin says he knows he's playing poorly. Exactly. Uh, frustration does lead to more mistakes. Yeah, Zach, you can get inside your own head for sure. Especially, at, especially at cornerback, especially at quarterback, where thought there's so much thought with those positions that it's real easy to get inside your own head. Uh, kicker and punter also; those are I, I've seen there, there have been kicking careers lost to like dudes just getting inside their heads, their own heads. Yeah, what was the number, it isn't what was like the defensive tackle where to? it's just like go uh, 10. He was wearing 10. Okay. Um, um, don't know why. So, so I, I gave I gave the uh, corners a B minus. What was what was the grading for you, Jared? I think that's I think that's fair um, as I because I, I think that the guys filling in on the opposite side uh, played well and mm -hmm. Burke gave up like two passes. He really shouldn't have given up, but that that, that seemed to be it. Um, okay. All right. And the, and the safeties here, I think just safeties have been all year been tremendous this year and another, another great game from the safeties here. So a, a solid a, I thought the safeties played uh, ex exceptionally well. For sure. Uh, we saw McAllister making plays before he got hurt. I don't know. I don't think he came back in. We saw Proctor making plays. Hickman had a great game. Um, yeah. Safeties are doing exactly what the safety should be doing. A is is good with me. Suncard says the problem with cornerback is you can be great 18 of 20 plays and still have a bad day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen anything about about injury status for you won't McAllister here. You you're yeah. not going to. They 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 hide those things. Nope, not gonna say that joke. Almost made a joke. And yeah. I, I stopped myself. All right. All right. And the last one, special teams, Jared. Um, it's it's such a mixed bag. Um it's it's really kind of a mixed bag because they were spectacular. Uh they were spectacular at certain points, kind of crappy at other points. Um yeah, I mean, I mean, Mirko, he had, Mirko had two kicks. Yeah, Mirko was great. In, inside, inside the 20 there. Um, Noah, perfect on extra points, didn't even need to uh, try to kick a field goal there. But, I mean, the, the, the big fumble. issue there, the big issue is that fumble there. Yep, you had, um, you had Ibuka uh, fumble, fumbling on the, uh, on the punt return there. So, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a big, that's a big, dip in the score that we would have to give them there. And especially since that led to seven points. So I would, I would say, I guess it's like a C plus. I would, I would say. D plus B minus something like that. You you just can't, you can't cause a turn. You, you can't, you can't drop a punt. You can't, you can't do that. Nope. You need, you need to return that for a touchdown. <laughs> To be fair, okay, Austin's right. dropping it. Um, 
if you're gonna if you're going to drop a punt, this is the game to do it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Nah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not giving him that. Yeah, but also right. just don't. Yeah. Buckeye leaves, Jared. Let's give a Buckeye leaves to an offensive player, a defensive player, and a just a third person and anywhere on the team here. God, so this feels this feels like set in stone for the offense and defense, doesn't it? Like th there are two answers for each that feel insanely obvious to me. Chop. Yep. Uh, for the offense. Steel Chambers, I think 100% for the defense. Um, uh, Austin says the wild card too. Uh, the top three are easy. Um, uh, you you could give it to Mirko. Um, I don't think that's where I want to take it. Um, I think I think my I I'll give it to like Donovan Jackson maybe just like one of the offensive linemen. Uh, okay. it could be Paris, uh, it could be, it could be Dwan Jones. Um, pick an pick another offensive lineman. Why? Yeah, I mean Luke Whipler, <laughs> pick pick an offensive lineman. Uh, just as a ceremonial offensive lineman. Yeah, I don't I'll, care if you gave one to Donovan. He already yeah, has. I, I, I'll, I'll stick with Mirko, just just like his coach. I'm 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 supporting him with his decision there. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I guess he did. I, I guess technically he didn't dis really accept his uh, decision because uh, I, I don't know. I saw I saw it somewhere um, uh, Sunday morning. Um, I guess Coach Day went over to Mirko and said, uh, "said did did someone tell you to run?" And then Mirko said, "No." And he said. Well, <laughs> We'll talk tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's probably like, you know, you've made the right decision, uh, but we 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 were up 39 points, buddy. Time and place. Yes. But I like his instinct. Yeah. Stop I like his card. instinct. Stop it. Stop it, Sun Card. Burko <laughs> doesn't even speak English. <laughs> I have news for you about Australia. <laughs> Mirko right. had right. Right. money right. on the over. That's right. funny. Quickly, quickly here with uh, some uh, answer, some questions here, Jared. So we've got to go through these super quick here. Uh, Esquire says, which, which was the biggest contributor for CJ's lackluster performance versus Rutgers? The weather, wind, defensive scheme, apathy, Lack of focus or poor execution. Uh, part defensive scheme, part poor execution. One hundred percent. They were giving him underneath throws. He should have been taking those underneath throws instead of trying to force the ball deep. Yeah. All right, uh, Duncan from the Discord. After two weeks in a row of having notable shouting incidents, is Ryan Day okay? Yes, uh, Ryan Day yeah. is okay. Yeah, of course. He's fired up. He's feeling himself. All right. We, we, got, a, we got a few questions from Austin here. Will Chop take over the bulk of carries even when uh, Trey Hundo is back at 100% with how he has performed? That's... Chop's the better it's, running back right now. He is. I'll yeah, say you, it. You got. You got to give it. You got to give it to the hot hand here. And then if Chop all of a sudden's like, eh, I'm not. Get, I'm not getting it done. I feel like Day in a heartbeat will give it to number thirty-two to uh, carry the rock. But right now, yeah, give it to the hot hand. Absolutely. Uh, if there was one singular problem with Burke, what would you point to? I'm wondering if he's just in his own head at this point. I'm wonder, and and like he missed a game due to an injury, and maybe I I don't know what the 
degree of that injury is. Um, but I also I am I am also just concerned at this point that it's psychological that he's basically found the cornerback version of the yips, and he just needs to mentally break out of it. And I I I, I say that like oh mentally break out of it, woohoo! And I know it, like it's it's easy it's a thing that's super easy to say but incredibly difficult to execute. Oh hey, uh, sorry to backtrack real quick. I know who my wild card is actually. It's uh, it's Jaden Ballard. I'm gonna give mine to Jaden Ballard. So, so you, you already gave it to Mur- you. Are you peeling the sticker off of Mirko's helmet? That's rude. I'm giving I'm giving it to Jaden Ballard. Um, mainly mainly because uh, <laughs> mainly because of uh his decision and awareness of that pooch uh kickoff, that pooch um, the onside that pooch kick. kickoff that that they that they tried to do. They tried to do like what Ohio State did last was it last year or two years ago? It was like maybe it was longer than that. It was like the perfect uh onside kick where. He just kicked it and uh, and then he just ran. I, I, I forget who it was, but they ran and just right into his arms. Yeah, that's right. It was um, Chris Olave. It, it was like the perfect uh, onside kick. And I, I felt like Rutgers was trying to do that, but it was uh, not as great of an attempt. All right, yeah, uh, back to the peeled the sticker. Off of right, back Marcus to the questions helmet. here. You're if the you one that left play- the questions. Uh, let's see. Ohio State is 93rd in the country in plays ran per game, averaging around 66.6 plays per game. Is this a problem or does it just show that Ohio State scores quickly? Would Ohio State be better off trying to control the clock or are the big plays more beneficial? I mean, getting to the end zone, right? That that's the important thing. I don't care how many plays it takes you. That's the important thing. Also, Ohio State is gone in most of their games into like clock draining moke draw. Hmm, I'm gonna try that sentence for a third time. Into clock draining mode. Um, you add that to the fact that they get huge chunk plays, even when they aren't getting like big plays, like enormous splash plays they're still averaging i think going into this game weren't they averaging over 10 yards per play at the before they went into this game on the season something like that yeah i you're just not going to run a lot of plays and hold the ball a lot doing that so like whatever's and just like score points and yep. of course like you don't want to go completely in the opposite direction and have your defense out there too long Score points. Worry about everything else later. Yeah. All right. And a few more questions from Buckeye Zach here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, answer cut some similar to that. Uh, uh, Mirko. Mirko is going to win the Ray Guy Award, isn't he? As much as we want to, I don't think he's going to, but he's, he's a solid, solid, solid punter. Did I say solid? He's you a did. solid punter. Yeah, I wonder, will he have the stats for it? Because Ohio State doesn't, just doesn't ask him to punt that much. Um, but when he we'll does. See. When it's, he does, though. Postseason awards are stupid. But I'll just I'll just leave it like that. All right. I'm just uh, saying, how do you compete with Iowa's punter? So, who's also excellent, but also mm-hmm. gets a ton of play. <laughs> uh, yeah. Buckeye Zach says, I, I love our offensive line. Now you say it. I love our offensive line. Yes, I love our offensive line. All right. Uh, and the last question here, we'll, we'll end it off with uh, the little uh, uh, shouting that happened with the two coaches here. Who wins in a bare knuckle brawl sanctioned boxing match? Ryan Day or Greg Schiano? Uh, I... <clears throat> I think it's Shiano. I'm sorry. I think so too. I think so too. <laughs> I'm sorry. I uh, Greg Greg kind of has that like don't look at him twice New Jersey guy thing about him. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. Yeah. All right. That we are over an hour, Jared. 
So oh, that's let's, the first let's wrap time in a while. this up now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Hey, Alexa, shut up. Alexa, shut up. No one was talking I don't to hear you. Don't, I don't hear it, Jared. Okay. Maybe the noise gate caught her, but I, she just started talking. Kyle McCord question. Right. Uh, we're, we're out of time. We're out of time. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's the end of today's show. Uh, go to sleepcast.com. Find a bunch of links to our other stuff. Uh, you go to sleepcast.com. It's just a link page. It's kind of like a link tree, except it's a campsite. Same thing. I just use campsite instead because I like it more. Um, so you can find like links to our T-shirt stores, all of our different places where you can watch video, um, including short uh, our shorts page on YouTube, including our regular page on YouTube. And you can find links to the podcast. You can find links to our TikTok page and our Instagram page where you can also find those those same highlights that you can find on YouTube shorts. Um, and that's that's it. I feel I'm, I'm done talking. Kyle, what do you have in Kyle's corner? Nothing. We're over on time. <laughs> nothing we're, mo we're we're moving on that's fair all right uh tonight's ending in music will be uh we'll be doing oh i just literally had them in my head and then i then it then it, then it was gone um <laughs> jared singing nobody and i mean nobody wants that absolutely no one wants that i'm done talking yeah eventually like i just run out that's that's where i'm at right now um any any uh suggestions down in the chat i had someone in my head and then i lost it and now i'm in like minor panic mode um so if one of y'all want to recommend an artist we will we'll do that i see a couple people typing I see a couple people typing I see a couple people national we can do the national. Yeah. Hell yeah. Cincinnati based, the national we will do that. So, uh, tonight's ending music will be by blood buzz. Oh yeah. I love that song. We'll do blood buzz, uh, today and we'll do some national for the rest of the week as well. But for now, for this episode, uh, this is blood buzz by the national. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is The National. Mm -hmm.